Hello and welcome to the third ECG basics video that I have recorded. So this time we're going to look at some ECG rhythm strips. If you didn't see number two in the series, I went through a six step process for interpreting 12 lead ECGs and a six step process for interpreting a rhythm strip. And using that, you can work out the abnormality on any rhythm strip. That six step process is articulated just here if you want to recap, go back to the previous video and you'll get more detail. We're going to use that now to look at some rhythm strips and work out what the abnormalities are. So here's our first rhythm strip. Uh, so is there any electrical activity? Yes, there is. What's the ventricular rate? Well, we could work that out, but it looks a bit slow. So it's bradycardic. Is the QRS rate regular or irregular? Well, let's have a little look at that. So we start across here and we seem to be plodding along nice and regularly here. It's a regular rhythm, but then hang on, not so regular here. It's a regularly irregular rhythm. So this means that basically there is a regular rhythm, but there's an irregularity because here there's a big pause. So we can call that regularly irregular. Is the QRS complex narrow or broad? Well, it's narrow. Is there any atrial activity? Yes, we can see some P waves. So here you can see a P wave. Here you can see a P wave. You can see plenty of P waves. How is atrial activity related to ventricular activity? Well, we've got a P wave and then we've got a QRS complex. The PR interval here is quite long, really. It's about the upper limit of normal, isn't it? About 200 milliseconds. So close to first degree heart block on that one. This one is a bit longer. This one is longer still. This one longer still, this one, we have no QRS complex following this P wave. And then we have a P wave and a QRS complex. So we've got a progressively lengthening PR interval until we drop a beat. And that is characteristic of the Venkibank phenomenon. So that is a second degree heart block because we're dropping some beats and conducting others. And it's Mobitz type one. So it's not quite as bad as Mobitz type two, generally, not quite as risky of progression to third degree heart block. And sometimes even athletes will get venky back heart block when they have a high vagal tone. Moving on, let's look at another ECG. So we've got electrical activity. It's a bit slow. It's not regular. So is it regularly irregular or irregularly regular? Now we probably need a longer rhythm strip to be sure. But you know, we've got a basic rhythm here. One, two, one, two. They're going at the same rate. So that could be seen as, as regular. But we have these irregularities because we've got a long pause there. And then at the other side, we've got a long pause just here. So it's regularly irregular. There's a broad QRS complex. Okay, we'll come back to that later when we, we look at the 12 lead ECG to try and explain it. Is there any atrial activity? Yes. I can see a P wave here. I can't see a QRS complex after it. I see a P wave and then a QRS complex and it's got a normal PR interval. P wave, QRS complex, normal PR interval. P wave, nothing. P wave, nothing. P wave, QRS complex, normal PR interval and then the same again. So we've got a, a P wave followed by QRS complexes with a normal PR interval that's just fixed. It doesn't seem to progressively lengthen. And then we've got some dropped beats where there's a P wave and no QRS complex. So this is second degree heart block. Uh, just to bring that up, there you go. You can see it a bit more clearly. Second degree heart block. So we know that because some beats are conducting, some beats aren't. And it's Mobit type two because we've got a constant PR interval, but then some beats are dropped. Now we could quantify that with a ratio. So you might say two to one heart block where you get two P waves for every QRS complex, three to one where you get three P waves, one QRS. Here we've actually got eight to five. On this screen, you can see eight P waves and five QRS complexes. So that would be an eight to five ratio, but you might need a longer rhythm strip to really work out that ratio. Moving on, let's have a look at this one. This one's got electrical activity. It's very, very slow. It's regular. The QRS rhythm is definitely regular. Uh, this narrow complex, there's atrial activity, but how is it related to the ventricular activity? So let's uh, have a little look at this one, bring it up now. So what have we got here? P wave, massive PR interval, and then a QRS complex, okay? P wave in what looks like a normal PR interval. P wave, huge QRS, PR interval here. Hang on a minute, 
P wave seems to be buried in the SD segment. Big PR segment. P wave buried in the T wave. It's completely and utterly erratic. This is complete heart block. There's no relationship between those P waves and the QRS complexes. Now, sometimes it would look like there is, because by coincidence, you have a PR and uh, P wave just before the QRS complex, but there's no relationship. And in fact, if you were to use a piece of paper and go along and put a little mark next to two P waves and then move it along the P waves, you will see that there's a regular P wave rhythm. And then you do the same for the QRS complexes. You see there's a regular QRS rhythm. The QRS complexes are coming slower than the P waves and there's no relationship between them. Independent rhythms, it's complete heart block. It's narrow complex, but that means we've got an escape somewhere high up in the ventricles, maybe in the fascicles. That's so that we're getting an escape at a reasonable rate, but it's still complete heart block. What about this one? This one's just about pattern recognition. Complete and utter chaos on this ECG. There's no pattern whatsoever. You can't bring anything out of it. It's ventricular fibrillation. There's only one thing that causes that. So this is an emergency. Obviously, check your patient if they're in cardiac arrest. Defibrillate them. Next, let's have a look at this one then. So this one looks fairly similar to the last one. But now we can start to see some patterns. So if, in fact, on this side of the ECG, it looks a bit like ventricular tachycardia. But then it sort of fades to nothing. And then we get a bit of ventricular tachycardia, and it seems to be pointing the other way. And now we go to nothing. And then look again, it's pointing back the same way as it was in the first place. This is torsade de pointe. This is a very dangerous rhythm. Sometimes patients have a pulse. Sometimes they're stable. You give them loads of magnesium. Sometimes you need to shock them and they're very unstable. What about this one? So we've got a fast rhythm. We've got narrow QRS complexes. It's, it's not regular though, is it? It's not regular. Um, if you, you know, you could use the paper method, couldn't you? Put the with a marker between two QRS complexes and move it along and you'll see it's completely chaotic. It's irregularly irregular. Narrow complexes, atrial activity, we can't be sure. It's just this kind of wandering baseline. It's atrial fibrillation. There aren't many things that cause an irregularly irregular QRS rhythm. This is uh, the, the most important one, atrial fibrillation. Uh, so that's classic atrial fibrillation. There you go, you can see it again. Uh, totally irregular QRS rhythm and totally chaotic baseline for the atrial activity. So let's have a look at another. Now we've got a really fast QRS rhythm, but it seems to be pretty regular actually. And so, well, what can cause this? There's a number of things that might cause a QRS rhythm like this. Um, if we have a look closely, we can't really pick out any atrial activity at all, can we? It's going very, very fast, probably in the order of 180 beats per minute, something like that. Uh, this is junctional tachycardia, supraventricular tachycardia. So we might treat that with vagal maneuvers. And if we have to, adenosine. What about this one now? So let's have a look at this. This is another fast rhythm. It's regular. It's got narrow QRS complexes. Uh, but these P waves look a little bit funny. Uh, it, doesn't it look like a saw tooth? The tooth of a saw? And you can see that before this QRS complex, and you've got a QRS complex. You've got a funny shaped T wave that looks almost like a sawtooth wave, and then another sawtooth wave. It's a regular rhythm. It's atrial flutter, and it's three to one atrial flutter. So technically, uh, typically you get 300 beats per minute with your atria, flutter going round and round the atria. One will conduct, one's buried in the QRS complex, one's buried in the T wave, the next one conducts. So that's three to one atrial flutter. So that's it from me for today. You can see a sneak preview there of what I'm going to cover next time, which is the axis. Uh, but today we've talked through some rhythm strip common abnormalities using, and we've interpreted them using our six step process. And as I said, it will interpret any abnormality on a rhythm strip just as it did just now. I hope you, you've valued this one. Look forward to seeing you next time.